Hey all, it's Linda. Welcome back to my channel. I don't know if I've ever said this or if I've said this 9 million times, but I don't think I've ever been more excited to film a video than I am today. <laughs> I am going to be diving deep into the brand new Melt and Beetlejuice collection. Oh my God, I can't believe it. I'm so, so excited. The second I saw them start to tease this collection, I knew that basically resistance was futile, okay? I knew I was going to get the entire damn collection and I did. So this is gonna be so hard to show you, that's what she said, but this is the entire collection I bought the PR box. This thing is expensive. This is the most money I have ever spent on a single makeup collection. So basically, I wanna dive really deep into this collection for you all because it is expensive. Each individual piece is pretty expensive. So I wanna make sure that if you're thinking about buying it, that you look over all the options and make sure it's right for you. This video is going to be a bit of a longer one. I am going to be going into each product. I'm gonna show you swatches. I'm going to show you a look, show you my first impressions, everything like that but we're really diving deep. So there will be timestamps down in the description box below. If you want to skip to any one section, please feel free to do that. But otherwise, oh my gosh, I just, I just couldn't, I just couldn't be more excited. I am such a massive Beetlejuice fan. So this is like a dream come true for me. So if you are also a Beetlejuice fan, if you're excited to see all the goodies and what I think about them, I would love if you'd give this video a thumbs up, if you'd share it with your friends, if you would subscribe, all of that good stuff that really does help out my channel. And I'm just, I, I, I'm like, I'm buzzing right now, okay? I am buzzing. Before we dive in, it is time to light the cat candle. If you're familiar with my channel, this cat candle has a metal cat skeleton inside that I only light this guy when I am filming so that we can watch the magic together because once this all burns down, we just get a little cat skeleton left behind. And for all of you who always yell at me about using this little itty bitty lighter, don't worry, I have a big boy lighter coming, but the cat is on fire, we can officially start. I do have a backdrop today, so you're not really gonna see him burning, but just know that he's there in your heart. I do wanna start by talking a little bit about the brand. So Mel Cosmetics was founded in 2012 by Dana Bomar and Laura Ariano. They both worked together at Nordstrom's, they worked at separate makeup counters and they got to be friends, but they realized that there was something kind of missing in the makeup world. So in 2013, they launched their first collection of five super bold ultra matte lipsticks and they sold out within minutes. After that moment, I guess you could say the rest is history. They now have eyeshadows and lipsticks and liquid lipsticks and some new products that are in this collection they've never had. They have a full range and they basically have a rabid fan base. And I mean, I'm one of those rabid people. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, not sorry. I am rabid for Melt Cosmetics. <laughs> As far as their vegan and cruelty-free status, Melt Cosmetics is Leaping Bunny certified, which I consider to kind of be the gold standard of cruelty-free certification. So they are cruelty-free. As far as being vegan, most of their products are vegan, but not all of them. So you just have to look in the description of each item whenever you're purchasing. I am pretty pumped to say though that like 90% of the Beetlejuice collection is vegan. Save for two eyeshadows in the waiting room palette, everything else is vegan. Okay, let's talk about this box. This is the PR box. So I'm not gonna be lifting this up often because it's really, really heavy. I will insert some lovely B-roll footage so you can see what it looks like because this is heavy and huge. But I absolutely love how the top of it is shaped like the Lost Souls door. So when the Maitlands go down the hallway when they first go to see Juno, the caseworker, and they've got that Lost Souls door, oh my God, like the thought put into every single aspect of this box is mind blowing. You open up the top and it has a sort of 3D diorama feel to it. And it is just, oh, it's so, so good. Everything is so well thought out. There's a drawer that opens at the bottom that has the kind of accessories, the not direct makeup products, but it has the brushes and the mirror and I would call it a brush roll, but it's just a purse as you will soon see. And I just, I just can't believe how much love was put into this collection. Even when I opened it, the labels were all facing very specific ways so that you would either see the word melt or Beetlejuice. And I just, I just can't fathom the time that went into putting these together and I am so appreciative. So I will try to show you here. This is just, I can't, words can't talk about how beautiful. Ow! 
If I get a concussion from this video and y'all don't give it a thumbs up, I swear to mother effing. As I was saying, this is where all the makeup items sit in there. So you do have the palettes, the gel liners, the mascara, the curler, the lipsticks, all of it fits beautifully into there. I'm going to put this down because, oh my God, that hurt way more than I'd like to admit. So this was available for a secret sale on Friday the 13th, but it is going to be available again next week on November 25th. That will be on MeltCosmetics.com. And on November 27th, all of the individual pieces will be on sale at Sephora as well. You cannot get the PR box at Sephora. You can only get it on Melt's website. I'm gonna link it down below. So if you want any of the pieces, everything will be right there for you. Okay, let's start talking about the products. The first thing we are going to talk about is the recently deceased palette. This is the item I was most excited about. It is so beautiful. I just, uh, again, the packaging, I can't fathom how much love and care went into this packaging. This retails for $48 and you do get eight shades. There are four pressed pigments, there are two ultra mattes, and there are two metallics. One really amazing detail is that, you know how there's always that plastic sheet on top of eyeshadows to protect them? They went above and beyond with theirs. It is a film cell almost from the movie. Let's see if you can see it if I do this. So you can see it's the scene where Adam and Barbara are in the cemetery going to visit Beetlejuice for the first time. It is just, again, one of those just loving details. Another amazing detail I cannot get over is how these are pressed. We have actual Beetlejuice pressed into all four matte shades, and that is just, again, such a little detail. I just so appreciate it because I am such a massive Beetlejuice fan. It's amazing. Now let's get into some swatches. This is my first time swatching the palette. I am so excited. Already, I am super impressed with these swatches. The metallics came up so beautifully and I didn't use water. As you saw, I literally go once into the pan and once on my arm, that's how I do all of my swatches. And there are none that I'm disappointed with. Draw a door, which is right here, definitely did fade out a little bit. So I think that color is one that's gonna be best when it's packed on, but just so beautiful. But I do think it's interesting that these two fingers are already stained pink just from swatching. The four press pigments are all of the purples down here. So technically in the United States, those are called press pigments and not eyeshadows because they have some ingredients that are not safe for around the immediate eye area. That is only in the US. In the EU, they're fine to be used around the eye area. So I will be using these as eyeshadows, but I do have to let you know that kind of caveat. Next is the Waiting Room Palette. This one actually has 10 shades and retails for $58. Again, you have the outer cardboard packaging and inside is this beautiful red acrylic container with the big old sandworm on it, same as the green palette. And I just, I'm so madly in love. And instead of having Beetlejuice pressed into this one, we have the sod girl. So this is the woman that is sawed in half that is waiting in the waiting room when Barbara and Adam are waiting to see Juno. Again, we have one of those kind of celluloid film strips in here. This one is of the sod girl who is one of my favorite characters in the entire movie. I just, oh, I adore her. The Waiting Room palette has six ultra mattes, two pressed pigments, which are Sod Girl and Lydia, one metallic and one shimmer. As I mentioned, this is the only product that has some non-vegan ingredients in it, and that is these very two first shades in No Exit and Obituary. So those are not vegan. The rest of the entire collection is vegan. And now let's get into some swatches. I think that this one might stain like crazy, but you know what? It's worth it because of how gorgeous it is. All right, 
let's talk about this palette because I have to admit I am surprised as hell. This is the palette I wasn't sure if I was going to love because if you know me or if you know my channel, I love warm tone shadows, even though like the other one has a lot of purple in it. That's kind of up my alley, whereas like gray and red is not usually up my alley, but these are so beautiful. The grays, I can't believe, like I think that, is it Tombstone? No, Shrunken Head. Shrunken Head might be one of my favorites in the whole palette. It is just stunning. It's like that perfect, perfect gray. Wow. Wow, 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 wee wah. So I'm just briefly gonna touch on price comparisons when it comes to these eyeshadow palettes. I like to do this for a lot of my videos where I talk about eyeshadow palettes, where I compare it to cost per gram. That's usually better than applying it to cost per eyeshadow because a pan can be an all different size, so you wanna make sure you are getting the best value for your money. I'm gonna put a couple charts on the screen for you so you can see what I'm talking about. The recently deceased palette comes in at 13.57 grams, bringing it to $3.54 per gram. The waiting room palette comes out to 17.46 grams, bringing it to $3.32 per gram. So obviously I did not compare it against every eyeshadow palette that has ever existed, just some popular ones that are in the market, ranging from high end to drugstore pricing. They fall in the middle to high range, which I feel like is a good place to be. It means they're not way overpriced or way underpriced. So that's kind of a happy spot for me. I also decided to compare these to other Melt eyeshadow palettes because the cost per gram differs so greatly on these, which I was kind of surprised at. They again sit in the sort of mid to high range just against Melt Cosmetics palettes. The cheapest one is the Gemini palette, which comes out to $2.80 per gram, and the most expensive one I compared it against was the original Rust Stack, which they do not make anymore because they did replace it with the Rust palette, but they do still have some stacks. That retailed for $3.92 per gram. Next, I want to talk about the gel liner. I have used gel liners from Melt before and I really, really, really love them. So the very first one is called The Afterlife. This is described as a neon chartreuse ultra matte. It's intentionally created sheer so that you can create a neon tone that isn't pastel. So this one is not supposed to be completely opaque. Just know that going in. The next one is 125 years. This is an opaque and modern ultra matte gravestone gray. This one is meant to be opaque and it's just really, really beautiful. I can see this being a great base for any smoky looks that you do and it can add just like a little bit of coolness to it as well. The final one is not technically a gel liner. This one is called a pigment paint and this one is called Utterly Alone. I am alone. I am utterly alone. This is described as having a rich purple hue with a luminescent indigo pigment that you can apply to the face and body. This one, again, contains ingredients that are not approved by the FDA and Melt Cosmetics says that they're not for use around the eyes. They have to say that legally, but just do it at your own risk, okay? I use these on my eyes all the time. I have no problem using that one on my eyes. Again, this is at your own risk. These do retail for $19 each. Let me show you some swatches. These do retail for $19 each and they all look so beautiful from the swatches, especially that purple. Beware though, that is going to stain. Usually when they say it's not for use around the media eye area, that just means it is going to stain. So just be aware, it's not gonna cause harm to your skin, but it will stain. Next with the collection, we have three bullet lipsticks. These all retail for $19 each. So let's go over them. The first one is called Miss Argentina and it is described as a vermilion ultra matte you can see the packaging is just so beautiful and I love how the sandworm is actually pressed into the lipstick again just one of those little details that is so amazing this color looks absolutely stunning to me and also I said that I thought the sod girl might be my favorite character no it's Miss Argentina hands down I was even Miss Argentina one year for Halloween the makeup job was absolutely terrible, but it was such a fun costume. Next, we have easily the most unique shade of lipstick I own. This one is called Ghost with the Most. This is described as a ghastly olive green, and it is again an ultra matte. 
This is just so interesting. I'm just wondering how I can layer this with other lipsticks because I mean, would I wear this on its own? I mean, maybe, maybe. I mean, that could be a look. The final lipstick is called Calypso. This one is described as a sheer iridescent sparkling magenta. And it's interesting because in the tube, it looks very, very matte. I see no sparkling, I see no iridescence, but I have seen swatches and I know it's there. So that's very interesting to me. As it is with the rest of the collection and with Melt's bullet lipsticks in general, the quality of these did not surprise me. They went on opaque in the swatches in almost one swipe. I did go over these with two swipes each just so you could see the full opacity, but they are just all so lovely. And the shimmering magenta came through just a little bit in Calypso, but that's one I'm gonna be curious to see in a look at some point. Next, we have a new product for Melt. These are called their Electrip Paints. These liquid lipsticks are $19 each, and they are supposed to start shimmery, they set to an electric foil, and then they stain for a long-lasting trip. So right in the description there, these are a lip stain. These will stain your lips, just know that. So we do have three shades. We have Strange and Unusual, which is a candy apple red with a peculiar fuchsia duochrome shift. This looks absolutely lovely. This almost looks more on the pink side a little bit, but really, really beautiful with lots of shimmer. Then we have It's Showtime, a warm purple metallic liquid lipstick with a pink duochrome shift. And finally, we have Weirder and Weirder. This is a black base with an odd purple shift, and this might be my favorite one. The amount of shimmer in these is absolutely incredible. This is with one swipe from the tube. I thought I would let you know, I had these on my arm for, I'm going to say approximately 30 seconds and they very much stained. Oh my God, the black one actually didn't stain at all, but that one was on for the least amount of time. But these other two, are super, super stains. <laughs> Next, we have the It's Showtime Mascara. This is $24 or it is $35 if you want to include the curler that comes with it. This has plant-based fibers that adhere to each individual lash, creating unreal thickness and length. As you can see, it sort of has that hourglass shape to the wand, and it did seem like a more wet formula. It just seems really lovely. I'm really curious to try it out. Up next is the Lydia brush set. This is a five piece, two toned black and white brush set and it has Lydia dancing the Calypso on the handles. These are so unique. The handles almost feel like they are metal. So they are very, very hefty and the brushes themselves are so, so soft. The set retails for $80 and these are high quality brushes. So they are synthetic hairs because they are vegan, but they are supposed to be textured to feel more like a natural hair brush and to pick up pigment like a natural hair brush would. It comes with this amazing faux leather sandworm printed handbag. It's not even a brush roll, it is a handbag and it is so badass. The very last piece in the collection is the Lydia mirror. So again, this has Lydia dancing the Calypso all around the sides. And I've seen a lot of people say that they were surprised at the size of this mirror because it is fairly small, head for size. But I love this size mirror. I hate it when it's big and bulky and really heavy. That's what she said. So this is really good for me for getting up close and really getting those details in. I love it. So again, this whole box retails for $350. The actual value of the whole case is $456. So you are saving a lot of money. If you like enough of this, it is worth it to get the whole collection like this because you are saving $100 and you are still getting this amazing box. It is finally time to start the look. So what I think I'm gonna do today is I think I want to try one palette on one eye and the other palette on the other eye I'm going to use, a, you know, a various amount of products, but there's no way I can use them all in this first look and this first impression. So stay tuned. I hope to have more videos either on my channel or on my Instagram using this collection because I feel so inspired looking at it. I wish I could use everything all at once, but obviously I only have one face. I have already primed and set my eyes, so I wanna start with the recently deceased palette. What I'm going to be doing is sort of speeding through this. I'm just gonna put some music up, but I am going to let you know on screen which shades I'm using and show you which brushes I'm using. So let's dive in.
right, here's the first eye done with the recently deceased palette. So I will say there is quite a bit of fallout with this palette, but that's, for me, it's to be expected with pressed pigments. So the purples, they are great. Lost Souls is one that I had to pack on a bunch. Now, I don't even know if you can tell on camera, but it did sort of turn pinky in the crease a little bit. So that could be my skin texture. That could be a whole myriad of things. But I just kept packing it on and packing it on and I'm really happy with the color. Purples are hard to get correct. I will say that, especially knowing that this is a vegan formula in this specific palette, I am really impressed with the purple. The lime greens, like lime green is my favorite color. I, I just, it's warming my heart so much and I can't believe I didn't have anything like this in my collection prior to this. I just, I love it. And that pop in the corner, I don't know if I'm gonna do eyeliner yet, but let's move on to the second eye, which I'm going to do with the waiting room palette. I am going to try something that is way outside my comfort zone, so wish me luck. Here is the second look. These are so drastically different that I feel like I look a little crazy right now, but that's okay with me because I am loving both of these. So I do want to apply a wing on this eye. So I'm gonna hop off screen and do that and I'll be right back. All right, so again, this palette also performed beautifully. I would suggest with both of these palettes, do your eye makeup first and then your foundation. There was a pretty significant amount of fallout. That doesn't bother me because these are so pigmented. It is ridiculous. I only use the gel liner on one eye and I love using those gel liners as a base. I feel like it really makes that lime green pop like crazy. So now I'm going to go ahead and curl my lashes with the Melt Lash Curler. This is a new product for them. Feels very gentle, which is nice. Sometimes these pinch too much and you're like, dude, what the fuck? All right, so I do like this mascara. I don't see it volumizing though. I do see it separating and lengthening like crazy, like my lashes are super long and almost spidery, which they even say in the description that if you use a couple layers, it can make them super spidery. So that's like their selling point. It's really pretty, I do like it, but it's not volumizing. So just be aware, if you're looking for a lengthening mascara, this could be the one for you. Let me see, um, actually, Wow, okay, so it is wet a formula, but it dried down pretty quickly. There was a tiny, tiny bit on my finger, but not much at all. So, oh, I am super happy with both of these looks. They are so different though. Oh, I love them, I love them, I love them. I am going to do a little bit of blush off screen because there is no blush in this collection and I'll be right back. I am having the hardest time deciding which of these lipsticks to use. It's kind of killing me. I'm like, do I want to use the purpley or the black? Like, I feel like I need to try one of these paints. Hi, it's me, your local 40 year old. How you doing? Okay, I know that there's a lot going on here, but I really did wanna try as many things as possible. So let's talk about my first impressions. The eyeshadow palettes both overperformed for me. They are so incredibly pigmented and I used such little shadow. The only one that I will say you need a little bit of patience with are some of the purples in the recently deceased palette as they are pressed pigments. So you do need to build them up just a little bit to get full opacity, but I don't mind that too much. I do prefer when my shadows work for me rather than me having to work for them. But when it comes to bright matte purples, I find that you do usually have to have a little more patience with that 
that specific color, so I'm not upset. As far as which one I like more, it's so funny because I was so drawn to the recently deceased palette, but I'm really feeling this like deep red smoky eye. I feel like it's surprisingly make my eye, making my eyes look like really blue. So I don't know, I really, really like it. The gel liner performed beautifully. The mascara is now completely dried down and my lashes look like ugh, spidery and long, which I usually would hate, but for some reason I'm loving it. And I don't know if you can tell exactly how metallic this lipstick is, it is, unbelievable how metallic it is and I don't usually like metallic lips on myself but I'm loving this and I know that it's gonna dry down or stain to this purple color so that's kind of cool too that when I take this off it's still gonna be there I will say my lips feel ever so slightly dry now that could be because usually for me when I put on liquid lipstick I usually put on a little bit of lip balm first because my lips are naturally very dry and I didn't do that this time but just be aware of that these do definitely dry down there is zero transfer no transfer whatsoever so I'm really impressed so would I say this collection is worth three hundred and fifty dollars that's the big question so here's my questions to you would you consider yourself to be a Beetlejuice fan are you also a makeup fan? If the answer to those two questions is yes then 100% this is worth it for you. I I am so impressed, not just with the makeup, but with the PR box, with the thought that went into every detail, the little film cells in the eyeshadow palettes, the pressings on each one of the eyeshadows. I am so, so impressed, and it's like warming my heart because this movie really does hold a special place in my heart. If you have no affinity to the movie Beetlejuice, should you spend 350 on this? I'll be honest, I don't know. I don't think that you necessarily need this box. Also, I think I forgot to mention, the brushes are amazing. They like really blend it out nicely. So I really like all the pieces in here. But again, if you are not a huge Beetlejuice fan, I don't think you need the whole kit. I think you can pick and choose the pieces that you might love. Like maybe you don't like purple lipsticks, so you can leave those two out. Maybe the black lipstick scares you a little bit, so you can leave that out. Or maybe you don't need this amazing hand mirror, which obviously you do. Everybody needs this hand mirror. But that way you can just pick and choose yourself what makes sense for you. So I know this video was really long, but thank you all so much for sticking with me. I want to know down in the comments what you think about this collection. I am so, so happy. It was a lot of money. I don't regret it for a split second. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I do put out new videos here on YouTube every Monday and also sometimes Fridays, and I would love to have you as a part of my Rockstar fam. You all can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Those are all Glitter Fallout, and as always, forever and evermore, you are super freaking rock stars. I love you with my whole heart, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. I love that I can do that because it's not going to transfer. Bye.